So the second topic for today is on methods of data collection. So what are the different methods of collecting data? And what we call your direct method and how do we do that? You make use of questionnaires, interviews, experimentations. What you did earlier was the direct method, no? You, you made use of questionnaire. Well, actually, kung ang ginawa nyo, diretso na inesher ninyo, di ba? So, the questionnaire itself was the data that I gave, uh, the table that I gave you earlier. And then, you did not do some, probably may interview a little kasi tinanong nyo kung yung, yung height or, and then the occupation, at saka yung ba pa mga data na nandoon. But since family members, then alam niyo na kung ano, di ba? Indirect method is from written or electronic records and documents. Now, reasons for drawing a sample, you have to consider that it would only make use of less time and then less costly, of course. Yung sa inyo, no cost at all because it was from home. Less cumbersome. That's why I made it a point na kung sakaling walang, walang ibang tao ang kasama, then just consider yourself. I, uh, I did not ask you to go out to your neighbors anymore or to your class, go to your classmates kasi it is pandemic and it would be very unsafe to do that. So the types of sampling methods, we have what we call your non-probability sampling and probability sampling. So you have your judgment, or pretty snowball, quota, convenience. Simple, random, certified, systematic, and your cluster sampling. So these are the types of sampling. You have your probability sampling or random sampling is a sampling technique in which the probability of getting any particular sample may be calculated. So non-probability, it does not meet this criterion and should be used with caution. Most of the time, probability sampling and ginagam. Okay? Then we have non-probability sampling. We have your convenient, convenience and accident, accidental sampling. So how do you do that? You, a group is selected, a twill or a researcher uses subject who happen to be accessible or who may represent certain types of characteristics. So yun ang tawag dun sa convenience, convenience or accidental sampling. The non-probability sampling is you make use of your judgment or that's what we call your purposive sampling. So you try to select particular elements from the population that are representative or informative about the topic of interest. <clears throat> you also what we call your quota sampling, a convenient sample with an effort made to ensure a certain distribution of demographic variables. So for example, uh, it's a certain, uh, a certain, certain place. You have a quota of the number of individual individuals that you're going to take the sample of. Here, we have here say the chocolate. When you try to evaluate or take a a, a what do you call this one a data about those who buy chocolate, if you found out that 40% are men and 60% are women. And then the respondent quota, the sample size, are 200. So out of the 280 are men and 120 are women. So uh, with this, within, this, within this data, you can conclude that ah, more women are buying chocolate. So pwede po mga, ano na, ah, more women are eating chocolate. Diba? So, yun yung mga pwede ninyong uh, makonclude from this respondent data. Non-probability sampling uses social networks to identify population which are difficult to find. So, so you can have your network sampling also. Then, we have your probability samples. You can have Simple random, 
systematic, stratified, or cluster. We have what we call your SRS, simple random sampling. It is self-weighting sampling design because all the elements in a population have an equal probability or chance of being included in the sample. So, yun yung pinaka ano na idea niya. You have an equal, equal probability of being included in the sample, in SRS. So, how do we uh, choose na, in a random sample? So, first, we define the population. Then, we enumerate its elements or units. And then, we use a random number of gen or a number generator to select the sample. Where the ang lottery method is actual and not random number generator. And use of table random numbers is another one. Okay. So if you take a look at this, we have the following. Say 1 to 5, no? Line 1, 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, 21 to 26, 30, 31 to 35, 36 to 40. So those are the values there. No numbers na ano. Nangyari, you have... This one, 1, 2, 3, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, yun yung mga students mo. Tapos, you have 13, 14 down the line. So out of this, you are able to choose 1, the 19, the number 8, the number 28, and number 32. So when you have systematic random sampling, we start by selecting an element from the list at random and then every kth element in the frame is selected. Example, n equals 500 and uh, big N is 500, small n is 50. Then k is equal to 10. So i is equal to 4. So you will now have 4. Uh, the systematic sample consists of the following. 4, 14, 24, and so on, until 494, okay? By 10 siya, by 10. So, 4, 14, 24, and so on. Therefore, okay, n equals 500 man ang number of sample. So, hanggang dapat hindi li nakamalapas sa 500, no? When you say 50, uh, n equals 50, so you have to follow. Probability sampling stratified use when we wish the sample to represent the various strata or subgroups of the population proportionately or to increase the, the precision of the estimate. So here, for example, you have a list of students. I do not know if you are familiar with uh, the names of your colleges. So CAS are called Arachnid, said are called Phoenix, Lynx, for I think CSM, COER, uh, Dragons, SESR Wolves, CBRR Riffins, and set are Tigers. So these are, they, you have three students from Arachnids and down the line. Huh? So. Cluster sampling. When you have natural groupings are evident in the population, these groupings are called your clusters. So they can be randomly selected and all elements from each selected cluster can be included in the sample. So you can have your one state's cluster sampling or two states cluster sampling. So take a sample of SASE's course. Uh, were you able to take the SASE? Hello? Sa batch niyo, nakatake pa kayo ng sase pa? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Ah, okay. Good. It's good. So, take a sample of sase scores by blowing the top 10 scores. And what kind of sampling technique is this? So, here's the answer. The top 10 scores 
take and do not constitute a random sample because it was drawn purposely. Ha? So, kay top 10 man yung gikuha niya. So, purpose, ang purpose is, ang isa man, katong top 10 lang. So, the remaining scores do not have, do not have the chance of being selected. Sampling technique is called your convenience sampling. Okay? So, may purpose siya. Yung top 10 lang man ang kinuha. Exercise is to take a sample of GPA scores by taking every fifth score in the list. What kind of sampling technique is this? So, so it's two. A, a researcher is studying environmental engineers but can only find five. She asked these engineers if they know someone of the same profession. They gave her they give her several further referrals who in turn provide additional contacts. In this way, she manages to contact sufficient engineers. What kind of sampling is employed? And number three. And then we have number four, number five. Okay, so there's the answer. So for the first example, okay, anyone? Exercise. What's number one? What kind of sampling technique is used? Anyone? Convenient sampling. Ano ba yung tawang sampling natin dito? <clears throat> I guess this or ilang you know, anong pages pa to? Pwede wala malapit naman din matapos. So let me just finish na lang. <clears throat> Sige, tingnan natin tong answer. So, some sample of GPA scores by taking every fifth score in the list. This is the sample taken is random and systematic random sampling was used. No? Kasi every fifth score in the list. So, systematic random sampling. The second one. A researcher is studying environmental engineers. But can only find five. She asks his engineers if they know someone of the same profession. So, bale snowball or network sampling. Okay, this one. Next would be a researcher and a professor at a university is interested in studying drinking behaviors among college students. Sinong drinkers sa inyo? Mga second year pa lang kayo. Wala man siguro. May mga drinkers na ba sa inyo? Do you drink? Alcoholic? Ang inamin nito, alcoholic. Yeah. Alcoholic drinks. Meron na? Wala, ma'am. Wala. That's good. Oh, meron. Siguro, social drinking. Baka meron yung iba. No? Wine. So, the professor teaches a sociology 101 class to most college freshmen and decides to use his or her class as the study sample. He or she passes out surveys during the class for the students to complete in hand and hand in, okay? So I can, the survey that I made earlier was just to ask you. So somebody said none, pero parang may narinig akong nag-voice out. So probably, meron din, no? Meron, pero ano lang, social drinking. So convenient sampling because the researcher is simply using subjects that are convenient and readily available. So it will be convenient for me if I'll just give you a, a, what do you call this one? A questionnaire right now. Hand in, a, hand in a questionnaire right now to your class and ask you, oh, sino yung, sino yung nagdi-drink ng alcohol? Okay? So, it will be convenient kasi diretso na ako na sa, kayo ang ginamit ko na sample students. So, researcher is interested in learning more about students at the top of their class. He or she is going to sample those students who fall onto the top of the class category. So, we use the judgment or purposive sampling. See students who meet a certain characteristic are purposely selected. So, judgment. Okay. So, for example, tingnan ko yung top 10 sa inyo. Nag, kunyari, nag, uh, nag-examine kayo, di ba? So, makita man dun sa class list kung, kung sa inyong number. Ang IIT number will actually uh, tell you kung ano yung Kung ik, ano yung rank ninyo sa exam ninyo when you took the exam. Okay. So, if I choose yung mga lower number, 
queen say nasa nasa what they call this one top of the class kayo okay okay pwede natin tingnan mamaya let us just it's 9.43. I'll, I'll take a look later on. Tingnan muna natin. Tapusin muna natin ito. Then we have, let's say the target population in a study was Christian church members in the Philippines. There is no list of all church members in the country. The researcher could, however, create a list of churches in the Philippines, choose a sample of churches, and then obtain a list of members from those churches. Okay? We call that your cluster sampling. Ready po? Um target population was to take a look at all the uh, universities in the Philippines and then take a take the list of the students enrolled in those uh, government government say government universities or pwede po private universities depende sa gagawin mong cluster na can make a cluster about universities which are private and then universities which are government universities okay now let's take a look at tong katong ganina okay i am interested in learning more about students at the top of their class so let me just see in natin this is m80 104 i i can't recording let's stop sharing one and then I'll stop recording now.